Hi everyone, Stepan here. Uh, today I'm going to continue the series on the Scotch game with the Gehring Gambit. Uh, a slightly less sound Gambit than uh, what we saw in the previous video, the Scotch Gambit with Bishop c4. And uh, far less theoretical, so easy to play uh, nevertheless. Even though it's not as good, uh, it's easy to play, so it might co confuse your opponent uh, before the Scotch Gambit does. So let's get into the opening. E4, E5, knight to F3, knight to C6, and now white goes for the scotch game with D4. If you haven't seen the introductory video on the scotch, please do, do to make sure you understand the basics and see all the options white has. And today we are going to focus, after E takes D4, on the Gehring Gambit, the move C3. In the previous video, we've looked at another temporary pawn sacrifice, bishop to c4, which is the scotch gambit, which is considered better for white and less risky for white. And uh, with bishop c4, white is developing a piece, putting pressure on f7, etc. With the move c3, the Gehring gambit, white doesn't do, do any of these things. The move c3 simply attempts to remove uh, the pawn from the center to make sure white can get rapid development and far more central control than in the other lines. And it's a full pawn sacrifice, obviously. If black takes on c3, then it's a full pawn sacrifice and white cannot hope to, to get back the pawn. So we are going to be looking at two moves. Of course, d takes c3, which is the accepted Gehring Gambit, and the declined with d5. So we are going to focus on these two moves. Now, in my opinion, and I have been looking at a lot of games today and yesterday uh, in the Gehring Gambit. I think that declining the Gambit is slightly uh, better for black. Uh, in, in both variations, the engine prefers black. But in the declined, uh, it thinks that white is almost equal. Still, I think that if you accept the Gambit, white is going to have a tremendous amount of peace activity and a huge initiative, which is going to be hard to parry. I'm going to show you one game uh, played between Yu Yang Yi and uh, Yu Mabaev. Uh, in which Yu Yang Yi played the full uh, variation with uh, it, the game it was accepted and uh, afterwards the pawn was taken even on b2 which is one of the lines and uh, and Yu Yang Yi played perfectly he, he just never uh, stopped putting pressure on black's position so it can get really scary so in my opinion declining uh, the gambit with the move d5 is a better option for black if you know uh, the theory very well in the accepted getting gambit then sure you are going to be better the engine thinks that black is better if he takes the pawn simply put but in this line you also do have some advantages so let's get into the opening after the move d5 a white has no better move but e takes d5 simply taking the pawn putting pressure on the knight the queen has to recapture Queen takes d5, and now white uh, takes the pawn towards the center, c takes d4. And here you have the position in which white is equal on material, black is no longer a pawn up. But black uh, has, I would say, a better structure, obviously, because d4 is an isolated pawn. Uh, the development is equal, and black has uh, some annoying moves such as bishop g4 and bishop to b4 check. So black, I would say, is definitely slightly better. The engine thinks it's equal because it can defend perfectly. But I think that here, uh, the slight annoying edge that black has is the reason why I wouldn't play the Gehring Gambit with white. So bishop g4 uh, as the main move. Bishop to e2, bishop b4 check now, and now knight to c3. And now the line, uh, the main line goes bishop takes f3. Bishop takes f3 and queen to c4. If uh, the queen takes on d4, uh, let me just show you that. Queen takes d4, then knight c6, winning the queen. Of course, uh, because the knight was defending the queen. So after bishop takes f3, the most uh, common move is queen to c4. And after queen to c4, uh, there are two options for white. Both of them, I think, black is fine. So in one of them, uh, bishop takes c6 is played, bc6, queen to e2 check, and exchanging the queens like this. Even though black has a ruined pawn structure on the c-file, I would prefer to have black here. Uh, I think that black has a fine game, and uh, there's basically nothing white can do to harm the black king. Uh, to be honest, black can't do much either, but still, I would rather have the black position. Uh, the second move that white can play uh, after queen to c4 if he doesn't want to accept the complete equality or even a, or even a slight edge for black with bishop to c with, with bishop takes c6 is the in my opinion inferior move queen to b3 and now after queen to b3 uh, black has nothing better but to take of course queen takes b3 a takes b3 
And now, uh, obviously, white is once again sacrificing a pawn, but b7 is hanging uh, as well. So now you get a forced complicated line uh, where both sides take the other player's rooks. And uh, this you simply have to memorize. Knight takes d4, bishop takes b7, knight to c2 check, king to e2, uh, knight takes a1. And now there's a nice intermezzo, which I guess most people would forget to play, uh, bishop c6, forcing the king to a slightly inferior square. And uh, here, if it, if it goes to a dark square, then knight check, of course, winning the bishop. And uh, so it basically has to go here uh, to f8, and after bishop uh, to c6 check, king to f8, you only now take the rook and you have brought uh, the, the king slightly further away. Knight takes b3, bishop to e3. This is the start. Let's say the start of the very forcing variation. Black is a pawn up, but it's going to be hard to keep that pawn. And you can see that uh, white has superior piece activity and the bishop pair. So you could argue who's better here. I, I think I would actually prefer white slightly. The engine thinks white is slightly better as well. So this is one of the lines where uh, white has given up a pawn, but he should be fine, he should be better. So let's go over that once again. So if 3 takes d4, c3, the Garing Gambit. Uh, the moves that I'm about to repeat are basically forced and you need to know them. d5, e takes d5, queen takes d5, c takes d4, bishop g4, bishop e2, bishop b4 check, knight c3. And now for black the option of uh, of taking on, f on, on f3 is the best move. Black can play differently though. This line I have just shown you with queen to c4 and then queen to b3 is just the best option for black. However, after knight to c3, uh, black doesn't have to capture here. Black has several other ideas, but he has to be careful. Uh, to Basically, he has to put enough pressure on the center unless he wants to trade off the pieces because this pawn does provide... Uh, great attacking chances for white and you can imagine if white manages to castle comfortably and get his rook to e1 get his bishop to c4 in some in some variations then white could be uh, very dangerous as well so bishop takes three takes uh, f3 is just the simplest way uh, the second most common move is knight to f6 but white wins 78 percent of the games with knight to f6 because of the knight to f6 castles you can now see that white has a huge initiative and white should be better in this position yeah, this is almost plus one for white. Because the black pieces are awkward, the king is still in the center, and the isolated queen's pawn actually serves a great attacking role here. So I would recommend the players with black, if you face the Garing Gambit, just to know this main line. So after c3, let's go over it once again. Uh, in the declined variation, if you want to play the declined variation, which I prefer, ed5, queen d5, cd4, bishop g4, bishop e2, bishop b4 check, knight c3, and remember, bishop takes f3, bishop takes f3, remember not to take the pawn, uh, you will lose the game, so queen c4, and now you can expect queen to b3, I think, bishop c6 is simpler and should be a draw, after queen b3, take, take, and play knight takes d4, go into this forcing line, and you will be a pawn up, uh, and white will have uh, slightly better pieces. But here I think that uh, it's playable for both sides and uh, the outcome is pretty uncertain. Okay, so that's for the declined variation, uh, which of course is a sideline most, most people take. So let's look at the, the main lines. After c3, uh, accept the gambit, uh, play like it's the 19th century, d takes c3. Okay, so black is now a clear pawn up. Uh, white, does he have anything for the pawn? I think he doesn't have enough, and uh, I think that it's just not enough. I mean, you can have some peace activity, you, you can have a, an attack, but if you want an attack, play the Scotch Gambit. Okay, uh, so after this, white has two options, bishop c4 and knight takes c3. We are going to look at both. First, let's look at uh, knight takes c3, which is a sideline, bishop c4 is the, is the main move. After knight takes c3, uh, white has recaptured one pawn, so one ha uh, white has six, black has seven pawns. White has two developed pieces, and after bishop to b4, uh, bishop to c4, white once again has pressure on the f7 pawn and attacking possibilities with the moves such as queen b3, putting extra pressure on f7, uh, queen uh, to, to, to d5, and stuff like that. And in fact, in this position, black's uh, main idea is the move d6. And uh, I don't think the move queen uh, here works immediately because, of course, bishop to e6. But if black doesn't play the move d6, then could be there could be some tricks. So it just goes to show how 
how dangerous this position can be. So if black plays knight f6, then he can, of course, castle to queen to d5. Uh, if black plays, let's say black plays a stupid move. Let's just see how he faces with this. So this reminds me of the Hungarian defense, but with the difference of this pawn not being here. So this should be basically lost, uh, I think. I'm not sure if queen to e7, then I'm looking at uh, bishop to, to g5. So anyway, it's it's enough annoying pressure for black to uh, to, to be able to go wrong. So after d takes c3, bishop to c4 is the main move. We are now looking at knight takes c3, bishop b4, bishop c4, and d6. Simply uh, trying to develop one of his main defenders to be able to go to e6 and to defend the f7 square or to develop it somewhere else, probably g4. But black definitely needs to develop fast and not allow uh, white initiative to to overshadow his uh, extra pawn white castles now the main move might surprise you uh, it might be counterintuitive but it's actually very good bishop takes c3 uh, isolating white pawns and now black has an extra pawn and black has isolated uh, two of white pawns and this reminds me of a variation in the italian uh, i'll just show you that as well uh, wait I'm not sure if the board is correct here. Okay, uh, I hate the new leeches interface. I'm sorry. Uh, so okay, I just want to show you this variation. You can find it in the series on the on the Italian uh, here. Uh, yeah. Okay. So one of the main lines here takes takes uh, takes after bishop to e2 uh, here 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 bishop here and here takes takes. Uh, so white in this position has an extra pawn and uh, the setup, the pawn structure is similar to, to what white has in this position. So he has the isolated A and C pawns and basically it's an aggressive way for black to play against the Italian and it's quite good. So I see no reason why this variation shouldn't be okay for white and it's playable. It's playable and they have experience in the Italian with white pieces against that line so I know that black can be deadly. Okay, so anyway, after b takes c3, uh, knight to f6, uh, e5, knight takes e5, knight takes e5, d takes e5. White, of course, does not want to trade the queen, so queen to b3. Once again, aggressively looking at the f7 pawn, queen to e7 is the main move, and now bishop to a3. And you can see that uh, white has some annoying pressure. If we go back to the start of the variation after c3, d takes c3, uh, we are now looking at the move knight takes c3, not the two pawn sacrifice, which can happen, or the full pawn sacrifice. Uh, but knight takes c3, now after bishop to b4, bishop c4, white has the makings of, a, of an attack. And these all of these moves that we are looking at, castles, knight, uh, bishop takes, b takes, knight f6, e5, knight takes e5, knight takes e5, d5, queen b3, queen e7, are all the best moves. And white still has this annoying move, bishop to a3. Now black has to defend. c5 is the most natural defense, but now bishop b5 check. Bishop to d7 covering, bishop takes d7. If you take with the queen, c5 is dropping. If you take with the uh, with the knight or with the king, b7 is dropping. So knight takes d7, queen takes b7 check, uh, queen takes b7 and castles. Once again, a position in which black has six pawns, white has five pawns. White definitely has the minor piece, uh, the better minor piece, and white has two weaknesses to exploit. Uh, Black also has two weaknesses, but I would say that black's pawns are weaker. And uh, especially with this bishop on the on the diagonal, looking at the pawn queen and rook, uh, black is going to have to react quickly if he doesn't want to give the pawn back. So I think the move knight takes c3 is very interesting. So c3, d takes c3, knight takes c3. This could be sounder than the main move. Uh, now we are going to look at the craziest variation, bishop c4, and this is the double pawn sacrifice. Uh, the most insane move and I think what the opening is about. Now, black can choose between two options, d6 and c takes b2, and I think that if white plays the double pawn sacrifice in the Gehring Gambit, you, you should just accept the Gambit and take the pawn. So uh, c takes b2 is not the main move, but I think it should be played for uh, Roman's sake. Uh, so bishop takes b2. And now the point of the two pawn sacrifice, of course, white now has five pawns, black has seven, but uh, white has a lot of stuff going on in the position. And white has a huge attack. Uh, while black only has one poor knight developed, uh, white has three very dangerous minor pieces and a lot of squares for the queen. So 
tons of opportunities for black to go wrong. So if you face this, face this opening, I think you should take on b2 because it's objectively the best move, but you should be very careful. Uh, in this position, uh, black scores 64% uh, of the time with the move d6. Uh, the move bishop b4 check, uh, white scores 50% of the time. So yeah, d6 is the safer option. Uh, option bishop b4 check is the better option, but more complicated to play. After d6, is, after d6 you are hemming in your bishop, but you are preparing to develop your other bishop and to defend f7 and stuff like that. But I want to look at the move bishop b4 because I think it's better. Firstly, you develop with tempo, prepare to castle as soon as possible. If you castle, you are fine. Uh, so now knight c3, knight f6, preparing to castle, queen to c2, d6, castles long, castles short. This is the start of the of the variation. The engines, of course, love black, uh, think black is minus one. So a huge advantage for black. However, uh, surviving this is not an easy thing to do. And uh, I'm, I'm just going to show you one game, uh, as I said, between Yu Yangi and Yuma Baev, in which uh, black is 2600, 2555, and he just got crushed. So let's look at that. Th this is the point of the opening. And I think the getting gambit is great for blitz, but for tournament games, uh, use it with care or choose the scotch gambit if you want to play something aggressive in the scotch. So let's see. D takes c3, bishop c4. C takes b2, bishop takes b2. You can see the evaluation uh, bar on the, right side, on the right side of the board. Bishop b4 check was played. Knight c3, d6, queen to b3, uh, instead of uh, castling or developing uh, any other pieces. Bishop to e6, challenging the bishop. And this might be a good defensive try, but uh, knight to f6 is... Uh, uh, usually normal or queen to d7. In in this position, I was actually looking at the move queen to e7 and then knight to f6 and trying to develop that way. But bishop to e6 uh, takes, takes, and in this position, Yu Yangi actually did not take the pawn, which was strange. But if you take the pawn, there's a high probability of a queen trade, I believe. Uh, so he just castled. Now, as you can see, according to the engines, the position is equal uh, regardless of the fact that black has two extra pawns. So white is doing something correct. Queen d7 was played. Knight to d5. If you take the knight, uh, if e takes d5, then e takes d5 is attacking the c6 knight, which defends the b4 bishop. So it's not really a peace sacrifice. It's just a temporary peace sacrifice, which opens up the e-file. So a really scary thing to do. Instead of that, you may have played the move a5. Now we have knight g5, uh, putting another attacker into play. Now, look at this monster bishop, look at the queen, and look at the two knights. Uh, I would really prefer to have uh, white here. In this position, now that the bishop is defended, knight g5 was actually a peace sacrifice, because if you take take, the knight moves, the bishop is defended. So in this position, he took, e takes d5. e takes d5, knight to e5, but now knight to e6, a monster knight. Knight to f6, a3, chasing the bishop away. Bishop c5, rook a to e1. And now uh, there was a big mistake played by black. You can see that b6 is the main move, even though no human would play it. He played king to f7, and now white is starting to gain an edge. Knight takes c5, d takes c5, rook takes c5, uh, winning, uh, winning the piece back. Now the material is uh, one, pawn, one extra pawn for black. Rook h to e8, d6 check. King to f8, rook takes c5. Material is equal. So as I think Yasser Seyravan would say, white has a free attack. Queen takes d6, a4, b6, rook f5, rook to e6, g4, h6, h4, uh, king to e8. Yeah, this it's not really clear how, how black should defend, and, and he didn't really manage to defend. Let me just show you the end of the game. King e8, a huge mistake, but it's not really... Uh, easy uh, to, to play the correct move here. The correct move was rook to e8, which is really hard to play because you are facing uh, this this pin. But king to e8, rook to d1, attacking the queen, queen to e7, g5, h takes g5, h takes g5, knight to h7, and now game over, uh, bishop to a3, attacking the queen, rook e1 check, king h2, queen e6, and you're going to just lose everything. Uh, 
In this position, rook takes e1 was played. Uh, the the queen is spinned, so the queen cannot take the queen. And if you take the rook, you get checkmated. And this is a mate in four. So what seems to be a very dubious gambit, if a black plays the main line with, uh, with the double pawn sacrifice, accepting the double pawn sacrifice, then I would really prefer to have white here. So to conclude, I think that uh, for white, this opening is almost fine. It's really risky, but it could be playable if black accepts uh, the gambit. I think it's, uh, it's okay. However, I think that for black, the best idea might be after c3 to play the move d5, avoid all of that, and enter a peaceful position uh, with a slight, slight, slight edge for black. This is surely going to annoy the... The player who plays the scotch, the, the scotch game with the Garen Gambit because he definitely wants to have an aggressive game. And this move is going to annoy them. So I would advise you to play this. Okay, uh, thank you very much. We have covered the two Gambits in the scotch. Uh, from tomorrow, we are going to be covering normal openings after knight takes uh, d4. And going to have some more classical variations. Thank you very much. Let me know what you think about the opening. And stay tuned for more chess. Bye-bye.